This is a letter I wrote home in 1944 to my wife Betty after she had written to tell me the sad news of the loss of our best man who had been killed. Darling, I'm really sorry to hear about David. That is one of the worst blows yet. I like David enormously. Having worked with some of the men of his unit, I can only guess what happened. It's a night patrol, and it is honestly a pity. I'm a Silver Cross mother. I lost my son, Michael. Today I'm reading the first letter I received from him. 7th of January, 93. The potential situation is tensing up. Mogadishu is closed while the two clans leaders we see on CNN shaking hands battle each other with indiscriminate artillery, random shootings, ambushes of food convoys, raids on the coalition forces. Rock throwing all leads to the possibility of an escalation, but that's not our fight yet. Our job is as remote to the save the Somali famine as you can get. We're here to intimidate the warlords. It's a difficult task. Well, that's enough of that for now. Bye. Love, Michael. My husband, Ian, served with the 1st Canadian Parachute Battalion in World War II. And this is a letter he sent to his friend, December 27, 1943. Dear Jack, I received your parcel about a week before Christmas. I would have sent you a letter a while ago, but at the time I got your parcel, we were just going out for a week's training. In the last month, we have been out to the airfield four times, and each time the jump has been cancelled because of rain or some weather trouble. That takes more out of a guy than actually jumping. I've had a bit of a lucky streak in gambling lately, so I'm quite flush with cash. I'll save that for my big leave. Well, that's all for now, Jack. Looking forward to hearing from you again soon. This is a letter that my grandfather, G. L. Shear, wrote from Rome, November 28, 1917. I got the fellow I shot just in front of our wire. I wouldn't forget the feeling as I pressed the trigger that night. On February 27th, we were in front of Lenz when 14 Fritzes raided our machine gun post and yours truly was on sentry. It was an awfully dark night and through no fault of mine, they were climbing over our parapet before I saw them. Of course, it was too late to fire the gun, and I thought it was all up. But some way or another, I managed to alarm the rest of the crew, and we beat them off. My name is Dale Patton. I'm going to be reading from a letter written by my husband's uncle, Lieutenant Edgar Patton. This letter was written from Grantham, England on April 15th, 1917, just three days after the end of the Battle of Vimy Ridge. Dear Mother, I have had no mail from home since coming here, so it may be that the boats are not crossing as often as formerly. Our work is pure tactics. We are given a map of the country and are told that we have to defend a position against a force advancing from a certain direction. Then we go over the ground, make a report, 
and finally tell how we would place our battalion, Lewis guns, ammunition, etc. I was certainly pleased to see that the Canadians took Vimy Ridge. That will be a landmark in our history of the war. The letter I am going to read was sent to my mother in April the 17th of 1945, the day after we liberated the town in the Netherlands called Lee Warden. We have uh, liberated a number of towns. You never saw anything like it in all your life. Once the Germans have been driven out and you enter the town, they crowd around the cars so badly you can hardly move. Your car is just one big bouquet of flowers that have been given you. The girls kiss you and the men shake your hands off. They are so happy they cry. You never saw anything like it before. Hi, my name is Major Jamie Phillips, and I deployed to Afghanistan in 2007 as an artillery troop commander. Um, I would send occasional emails home to my family and friends, updating them on what I was up to, and this is an excerpt from one of those. From Jamie to family and friends. Subject. Update from the desert. Hi all, things here are going well, finally starting to heat up. We are in a more austere position right now, meaning no showers, no laundry, and lots of dirty campers. But standards for cleanliness have decreased anyway. It's better though, a lot more interesting. I hear we may actually have even been mentioned on the news, but reports are still unconfirmed. I'm starting to look forward very much to coming home, although there's no doubt in my mind that the heat in Petawawa is much worse than the heat in Afghanistan. Take good care everyone, Jamie.